I've been working in the upstairs area for, I don't know, like a few weeks. So what we have done is I've basically washed all the walls. So it's super dirty. I patched all the holes. Primer has gone on. So now I just want to make sure that I'm picking like the right color. I do want a little bit more of a coherent look in this house. So my preference of houses are actually like very like traditional, like heavy wood, very, very like heavily ornated houses. Apparently this house is not. So I've been trying to figure out what style of home this is. So it's not mid-century modern because it was built in the 70s. And it's definitely not ranch, nor is it contemporary. So I think this is like something that falls into like contemporary modern with a little bit of a ranch style, but not necessarily. It's just kind of like a mixture of everything. So this is my choice of paint. It's actually zero VOC. There's about two main brands in the market that are zero, zero VOC. One is Safe Coat, which I use in my LA house. And then the second one is Ecos. So all of the primer here is also Ecos. Then if you want to get some paint samples, what they do is they do send you like these free color cards. I do want to keep this house a little bit warm. I was really into cool colors when I was in my LA house. Let's go to a different room. This weird chandelier is just like giving weird shadows. Um, so, wow, it's really dark in here. Let's go to the bird room. So what I want to do is this house, as you can see, has like these like sage, like sage green color walls and there's like multiple colors going on and the rooms, the colors were kind of crazy. So I want to make everything pretty neutral. So this is just a basic white primer. So like color could stick on better. So these are the five samples, color samples that I'm looking at. This light is very yellow, so these are gonna look a little bit more yellow than they are. You can kind of see like this. So you can see this has a lot of gray to it, and this has a little bit more of a brown beige color. Twinkle Twinkle is almost white, but you can see like the primer is actually a white color, and this has a little bit of like very, very faint yellow to it. And then if you look at it side by side, it's hard to tell the difference, especially in this yellow lighting. I think this is like a hair different, barely though. And then we have Luna Moon, which also is a little bit more on like lighter than this. I think Luna Moon is more like in between these two but you can kind of see this has a little bit more yellow to it. So, I don't know. 
If I wanted to go with this color, this is actually what the original color of this room was, so I don't think I'd go with it. I'm also, most of my walls I like to actually paint flat, which means like there's no sheen to it. I definitely do not like sheen. So they're not gonna be as shiny as these are. When you usually paint stuff, they do come out a little bit darker than how you see it on swatches. I'm probably gonna do either of these two. And then I just wanna stick to one color and paint like the entire house. And then the furniture and everything else will kind of pop because I want the walls to actually kind of fade into the background. So these windows I am not a huge fan of. So they're only a single pane and they have been painted shut so if I wanted to score them, which basically means just cut like where the opening is and try to open them, then they will open. But there's no like mosquito net or anything. So, you know, like birds can fly out. So this room window is never going to be opened. So for the closet doors, I've been thinking if I could find like vintage French doors or even doors where I can make it look a little bit weathered and just kind of have, I don't know, this closet is big so it'll probably need like sliding doors but there are some rooms that have smaller closet openings and I thought it'd be super cute if I could just have like these like really weathered like little French doors that you could open and I definitely want to keep all of like the doors whether it's sliding or whatnot like wood color like light wood color these doors are jank, they're obviously going to go, and I'm looking for like solid wood interior doors, which I haven't had any luck finding. There's a very specific style I'm looking for. So once I find the doors, like we're just gonna take all of this out and all these doors will go. So I think like with that, like, you know, like near white walls and then some wood accents, like in like the doors, and then this, maybe, I don't know, maybe I'll strip off the paint and just really just stain it because there is wood underneath here. to get reading superpowers with Speechify. I'm Simon. I know you are excited to use Speechify, so we're gonna get you set up as quickly as possible. It will only take about a minute, so stick with us. First, hello, this one is. Thank you. I'm excited you picked me to bring life to the words on your screen. Now choose your best listening speed. Faster reading speeds helps you get through even more information less time. You can just speed up or down whenever you want. Pretty cool, huh? You might as well claim the title of valedictorian right now because you are going to learn so much better with speechify. Hi everyone. Weird angle, but I don't have anything to put my phone on. Okay, so I've been coming to my... What should I do? Hi. So 
I've been coming to my new house pretty much every day. I do kind of want to have like an element of antique salvage stuff here in the house because we're in Detroit proper and there's a lot of old houses and you know a lot of history in the city so I do want to incorporate a little bit of that into the house. Before I go in today I forgot that I had homework due today so I'm just gonna try to finish my homework in the car submit it so I don't have to feel a little chased towards the end of the day and then little by little we'll keep working on the house Wow, it's suddenly so cold here. Uh All right, that's my paint. I ordered five gallons of paint from Ecos Paint. They are a zero VOC paint company. And I'm especially really concerned about the bird room. Nothing fumey can come out when the birds move in because they're very sensitive to anything like chemical. So I don't want my birds having some sort of like health problem when they move in here. If you're worried about like paint fumes and smells, I recommend trying Ecos um, paint. I will go over do's and don'ts of painting just based off of my prior experience with painting walls. So first things first is you definitely want to clean your walls. You don't want any like grease or any residue on your walls. So if you have kids or if you're just like a constant wall toucher and you want to refresh your room with new paint, I recommend you just like really wipe it down. And then if you want to go from a light color to a dark color, I don't think you necessarily have to do any sort of like priming like I did. But if you're going from a dark color to a lighter color, you definitely want to just prime the walls first. If you don't, then when you're actually painting and like there's little bits of like streaks or if you don't paint a thick enough layer, then sometimes like you can kind of see the darker color kind of come through and then it gets like blotchy and just it's not pleasant and as you can see my priming is not like beautiful and i think that's okay because what priming does is it prepares the wall and there is a little bit of a matte texture to the primer so what it does is it just like adds like a good surface for the paint to actually stick to 
So we're gonna try putting sugar coat on here. Sugar coat I ordered flat, which means it's matte, there's no sheen. And usually flat paint is used for bedrooms like this. You don't wanna use them in bathrooms or like high traffic areas. All right, we're gonna go into tools. Tools are super easy. You need paint, obviously. I have my bucket over there. And then you need a roller. So this is my roller. This is from Rooster. You can get these type of rollers from like any sort of hardware store like Home Depot or Lowe's. I think the Midwest one here in Michigan is called Menards. You might want a pole like there's a lot more fancier ones but I have this and it's just a wooden pole with a screw top. Just kind of screw it on to your roller so you don't have to go up and down step ladders to paint like the taller areas of the ceiling. I do like to kind of make sure that this doesn't wobble around, so I do put tape, but you don't necessarily have to. This is just kind of my ritual. So if you're gonna paint a lot of area like me, you could actually use like this like grill that you put into your bucket and just use your bucket as your paint bucket and take your paint out directly from here and just apply it all over the walls and stuff. Or if you're only painting like an accent wall or a small area, what I would recommend you to do is buy a paint tray and just pour. For me, all of my second floor rooms, I'm hoping to get them done by the end of this weekend, which is half of today and tomorrow. I'm just gonna work straight out of the bucket. That's what I've been doing with my primer and I haven't seen any problems. All right, so for the roller, the shorter these like fibers are and uh, the denser they are, the more flatter they come out. If you like a little bit of texture on your walls, like try to get like the more like shaggy type, and then you'll get like that wall texture. I don't like wall texture. I like my walls really flat. So we're just gonna add this onto. Oh. One last thing is when you're painting, you do wanna go in like one direction. You don't wanna like paint like this and then like this and then like this. Like it's really not gonna show up well. To get everything blended and one knot, really just all one direction. I know a lot of painters cut. Cutting means that like you really like go through all the edges with your brush. Because I'm going to actually do the walls and the ceiling the same color, I'm not gonna cut. All right, let's get started. Hi, I had just about to pick up a table, so we're done with this wall, and now I'm just gonna speed up. Good morning. 
or good afternoon today is day two of painting so i am going to apply a second coat here but as you can see there are some imperfections on the wall so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take a sandpaper and sand these off i'm just going to do like a quick visual inspection and then bring my light in to make sure that i'm not missing any spots like you could kind of see there's a line here like some sort of hair caught in here so all these things should be sanded out before we apply our second coat and then i bought this today oops so it's a spray painter and it's like the smallest like detailed one possible because i used to have a bigger one um i think it was like this and it was too powerful for what i needed it for so basically what happened was it would most of the time like overspray and then i'd have to like sand off like a lot of like paint and it was just like not easy to work with so this time hopefully i'm hoping that this has less power and like less reach because what i really need this for is like right there where you're supposed to cut but um i don't know i just don't have the technique so you can kind of see like how there's like brush strokes and I just don't have the patience to actually try to cut everything and it doesn't really matter because this color and this color is actually the same so all I need to do is just fill in like the edges I'm back I had to drive all the way back to Lowe's and get a new sprayer so the first one that I bought was basically just this part and it didn't have like this part which is kind of like the engine of this entire sprayer so i bought this and hopefully like i said it is not as powerful as like the higher end models because powerful is not what we're going for 